rich rising everyone it is healing wednesday um it has been a wonderful morning so i decided to continue on this great energy to tiktok my name is shana singleton aka the herpes goddess and yes half of me is a big flex i am the founder of herpes can never grow and the largest herpes awareness platform of over 341k because i inspire people to love themselves more The mission at Herpes Can Never is to be at war with the stigma until our community feels comfortable being open about their status and proud of their sexuality. Welcome to the live. For those of you who don't already know who I am, um, I found out I had herpes in 2015. And the day that I found out I had herpes was the same day I found out I was pregnant. It all started with something I thought was a razor bump. And two weeks before I got my pregnancy test, I had a razor bump and it was extremely painful. I told my partner at the time to look at it. He was like, go ahead and go get get it checked out. And I did. When I went to the doctor, the doctor was sure it was a razor bump. She was like, you have nothing to worry about. It's a razor bump. Trust me, I know. But it was just so painful that I could not believe that it was a razor bump. So I demanded that she test the area for me. Um, She tested the area. She said, if you don't hear from me in two weeks, you're okay. I didn't hear from my doctor in two weeks, all right? At this time, I'm having all the pregnancy symptoms. So um, I go back to the doctor to test to see um, if I was pregnant. She comes back in the room and she's like, I got good news and I got bad news. What do you want first? I'm like, all right, give me the bad news first so I can just end it off with the good news. She says, bad news is you tested positive for HSV2. She can tell I didn't know what HSV2 was. I had no idea what HSV2 was. And she was like, you have herpes, just don't have sex during an outbreak, which is bad advice. My doctor should not have told me that. Keep it for it. Good news is that you're pregnant. Maybe I was still waiting on the good news. But <laughs> I ended up finding out that not only that I had herpes, but I was pregnant as well. So that's a little bit of my story. I do have HSV2 genital herpes. My outbreak site is on the right lip towards the bottom. And um, I no longer experience outbreaks after changing my lifestyle. That is just a quick rush version of my story. If you are interested in my real story, I do have my YouTube channel. You can find a link for that in my bio. But while we're here and we have the live jumping, I would love to answer any of the questions that y'all may have regarding herpes. I see y'all in there. OM3, OMG, I'm going through this right now. I was never supposed to have children. How do you know? Um, You have to get tested when you're having an outbreak because I can't tell. Well, I when I have an outbreak, I actually have a sore that comes in the same spot. So, um... That's how I know. Outbreaks can look like a small as a paper cut. It can look like the sores that you see on people's lips, which is lip herpes. It can look like a cluster with a bunch of bumps within the cluster. Um, But once you're having a sore, actually get the area tested. If you're not having any symptoms, you can get request an IgG and an IgM blood test. Is it true nuts are bad? Nuts are not bad. Nuts are a great source of protein, especially if you're doing a plant-based diet. You're going to lean on nuts for your protein. The only thing with nuts are they're high in arginine. And arginine is an amino acid that our bodies naturally produce, but the herpes virus thrives with that amino acid. So say if you're experiencing prodrome symptoms or you're currently going through an outbreak, it might not be a good idea to eat nuts during that time because you may be egging your outbreak on to stay a lot longer than what it has to. Okay, let's see what else we got here. What do you mean by changing your lifestyle to stop an outbreak? How do you stop them? I do offer my body journaling workshop and my herpes diet and remedies workshop in the link in my bio. It's currently on sale because it will be coming off the website by Herpes Awareness Day because we have some some more stuff coming in. But um, I had to change, just learn how to protect my peace, what I was consuming as far as television and music and people and places and things. 
Um, the herpes virus is sensitive and it's sensitive to a low immune system. Stress will lower your immune system. Lack of sleep will lower your immune system. Negativity will lower your immune system. Food will lower your immune system. There's a lot of things that will lower your immune system. So changing my lifestyle just in regards to what helps me live a healthier life. The spore test, you have a culture or PCR, which can get done on your actual sore. And then there's the two blood tests, the IgG and IgM blood test that you can get to test to see if your body has antibodies for the herpes virus. Um, if you want more thorough explanation on my YouTube channel, I have a YouTube video titled Herpes Testing. You can get to the link for that in my bio. The link for that is in my bio. How do you deal with prodrome symptoms so that it doesn't lead to an outbreak? Well, when my prodrome symptoms appear, I avoid foods that are highly processed. I avoid foods that are high in sugar, and I also avoid foods that are high in arginine. Also, when my prodrome symptoms appear, I go through full boost my immune system mode. This is when I am, you should be doing black seed oil every day, but black seed oil, sea moss, ginger, turmeric, zinc, um, vitamin C, garlic, these are all things that can help boost your immune system. If you're seeking for more information, select the link in my bio. Also go to um, our Instagram page. Our actual Herpes Canaver Instagram page is constantly putting up tips as far as boosting your immune system, changing your um, learning beliefs, prodrome symptoms, foods to avoid, foods to eat. So go ahead and check it out. How old is your baby? How many kids do you have now? My son will be six in April and I only have one boy. Does certain body washes affect it? No, not that I know of. Okay, prodrome symptoms are symptoms that can appear a few days or 30 minutes before an actual herpes outbreak. All they did was look at me and he just knew what it was. I was so embarrassed and devastated. I can understand why you were embarrassed and devastated. But hopefully since then, your view and your outlook on yourself has changed. What if you have no symptoms? If you have no symptoms, then you are asymptomatic. And that is completely normal. Most people within the herpes community are asymptomatic and show no symptoms. There's only a small percentage of us that actually experience outbreaks. Actually, 85% of people with herpes do not know that they have herpes because they show no symptoms. Also, not everyone's triggers are the same. Yes, everyone's triggers are not the same. And this is why we offer the body journaling workshop. Body journaling workshop is going to guide you on how to collect that data for yourself so that you can learn your own personal triggers. www.herpescouldnever.com. Also, the link in my bio. Was he born with it too? Well, neonatal herpes is fatal, so he would be dead. But my son is herpes negative. And I had a vaginal birth. Where are you from? I'd like to say I'm from everywhere. I'm originally from Harlem. Um, I was raised in Delaware, and then I joined the service, so... Um, everywhere. <laughs> Rich Rising in Cleveland, Ohio, I see you. How do you know if you kiss someone who has herpes? I don't know how I would know if you kiss someone who has herpes. Um, they told you they had herpes and you kissed them? Or did you require to see their STD, STI results before kissing the person? I mean, that's the only way you would know. Um, a lot of people don't know that some people, when they get their STD test, they only get their private areas tested. But when you're getting a full-blown STD test, you should be getting your throat tested, your mouth tested, your, your private area tested, including your anus. If you're engaging in any type of um, anal intercourse, you should be getting your anus test as well, tested as well. 
if you're having an active break uh, outbreak while in labor, they'll do a C-section. Yes, this is correct. Are prodromal symptoms occurring during viral? Yes, prodromal symptoms is an indication that you're going through viral shedding. The biggest indication that you're going through viral shedding is having a herpes outbreak. True, I'm asymptomatic and I never had symptoms until I got checked, which is very normal. Um, my partner, Amber Spratt Jones, she's the co-founder of Herpes Can Never. She's asymptomatic and never experienced um, outbreaks. Now, as far as symptoms go, you may be experiencing symptoms and don't know it because you haven't taken the time to do the body journaling and collect the data for yourself to even learn to see if Maybe I'm not experiencing outbreak, outbreaks, but I might be experiencing some symptoms. One of my symptoms is I get bad nerve pain before an outbreak on my right leg. The sciatic nerve is like from my right toe all the way up into my lower back. How would you know if you're asymptomatic? You know you're asymptomatic if you don't show any symptoms. If you tested positive for herpes and you never had any symptoms, then you're asymptomatic. You're bold. I love your courage. Thank you. Did you catch this in the service? I don't know when I got herpes. I know when I found out I had herpes. When I found out I had herpes, yes, I was in the service. Did I get herpes in the service? I, I wouldn't be able to answer that. Do you have to take certain medications every day? You don't have to take the medications. There are three different types of medications that are prescribed to people who have herpes. It is valcyclovir, acyclovir, and famcyclovir. But um, you don't have to take those medications. It's suggested that you do. It's a suppression, suppression medication. I personally don't take any of the antivirals. I have it and never had symptoms until it started taking medicine for it. I have HSV too. Can I kiss someone even if I'm asymptomatic for type one? Well, type one or type two can be both above and below the navel. I just want to make sure that it's clear. Just because someone has lip herpes doesn't mean that they have type one. They could have type two lip herpes. Can I kiss someone if I'm asymptomatic? I mean, you can. You just don't know when you're going through viral shedding. And you don't even know if your HSV-1 shows up in your lip. The key with herpes is it's a skin-to-skin -skin contact virus, but you have to come in contact with where the virus entered in that person's body. So if the virus, I know where my entry spot is. It's on my right lip down there towards the bottom. If someone who gets lip herpes in the same spot all the time, they know that their entry spot might be here on their lip. But if you're asymptomatic, you, you kind of have no idea where your entry spot is. So just because you have HSV-1 doesn't mean that your entry spot is on your lips. Your entry spot can be on your face, on your fingers, um, in your throat, in your eye. It can be anywhere. Some doctors won't even test you if you do not have an active outbreak. No, the CDC um, recommends against testing for herpes unless there are symptoms present. Uh, I applaud you for being so open and transparent. God bless. Thank you. How often do you have outbreaks? I don't experience outbreaks anymore. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you for all the blessings. Thank you for being honest. Welcome. I don't take Valsiclavir. Okay. Can a blood test really identify between type 1 and type 2? Yes. Depending on which one you take. I go into detail about the test in my YouTube video titled Herpes Testing. You can find me on YouTube, Herpes Goddess or Shana Singleton. My YouTube link is also in the bio. 
let's go get tea together and talk. I would love to do that. Where are you located? Have you had the conversation with a new partner and how did it go? Any tips? I'm going to be 100% honest with y'all because for advocates, we don't have to have that conversation only because we have broken the stigma within our own lives to the point that herpes is just casually coming out of my mouth. Like, follow me on TikTok. I'm the herpes goddess. Or, hey, da 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 da. What do you do for a living? Oh, I am the founder of Herpes Can Never. Like, I'm constantly talking about herpes. So I don't have the whole, oh my God, when do I tell? How do I tell? This and this and this and that. I kind of think that if you have any fear talking about your herpes, then you're not ready to date. That's a personal opinion of mine, only because you need to figure out why you haven't accepted your herpes or why is it, why is rejection scaring you? We only fear rejection if we're rejecting ourselves. So I think it's important for us to uncover why we're rejecting ourselves and heal from that and learn how to love ourselves unapologet- unapologetically and unconditionally before stepping into the dating world. If not, you're going to be searching for trauma bonds. You're going to, to be seeking for acceptance when you don't expect accept yourself. That's a tall order. And the only type of people who are truly attracted to that is a narcissist or a manipulator, someone who benefits off of the fact that you haven't accepted yourself and you're struggling with self-acceptance. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm just starting. Okay. I don't put myself in stressful situations and I eat health. Oh, these comments is going fast. <laughs> Why do guys don't get symptoms? It's not just guys that don't get symptoms when it comes to herpes. It's mo- majority of the community don't get symptoms. Majority of people with herpes are asymptomatic. Where were you eight years ago? Oh, I'm here now, stay. <laughs> someone made a big deal about STIs and I told him my status and then he turned around and told me projection people are going to project how they feel about themselves on you then he got treated for chlamydia and gonorrhea I said so herpes is different is there any reason why the ones who get symptoms do and the asymptomatics don't no it's so many different reasons why that may be. That's kind of like how I used to get back to back outbreaks, but I don't get outbreaks anymore because I've changed my lifestyle. Um, everyone's lifestyle is different. Um, people hold stress differently. People hold their triggers differently. Music, TV, what we surround ourselves with can be a big thing when it comes to outbreak. Get the status of your life, again, stress is going to lower your immune system. Negativity is going to lower your immune system. Lack of sleep is going to lower your immune system. A low immune system triggers on an outbreak. Um, food, processed foods, refined foods, having a dirty gut could be a reason why you experience outbreaks. There's so many different things that comes into play. So many different variables to just have one question, one answer for that question. I had a beginning outbreak in shave. Is it possible that I could spread it? Um, The possibility of you spreading your virus to a different area of your body is slim to none. I just want to say that, but it is a possibility. Usually when, say if I have HSV2, if HSV2 has already attached to my sacral gagnon, that it's pretty impossible for it to attach on a different area of my body because it's already living in that on that nerve. Now I can probably pass it to my trigeminal ganglion and might see it above my navel just because I wasn't being careful. But say if I had HSV one two and it was attached to my trigeminal ganglion, most likely HSV two is not gonna want to live there because it's not gonna want to share space with the other virus. How do you clean your gut? I've been having stomach issues. Um, you can detox. Um, it's all a matter of how you're eating. Um, people who eat meat struggle with this. So if you still eat meat, I suggest that you detox monthly to, to clean your gut. Um, our intestines are 
more than triple the size of us in our length. You know, our intestines are big and long, and sometimes it's hard for meat to go through that it takes a lot longer for it to pass through your body and it will clog up your gut and it will rot and and leave residue in your gut while it's trying to digest and get down versus say like a meat eating animal their intestines are very short so when they eat their meat it goes into the body and it comes right out versus humans we weren't meant to eat meat so it takes a little bit time and it and it leaves us with an unhealthy gut Now, I'm not trying to stray you away from eat. I'm never going to be the person that's going to try to force a plant-based lifestyle on anyone. But if you do eat meat, I think my number one advice is to get comfortable with eating vegetables. Make your meat a side dish versus the main course on your dish. And take breaks and detox from meat often just to give your gut a, a fighting chance. If you're interested in my diet, I do have my um, herpes diet and remedies course on workshop located in the link in my bio. I've gotten comfortable with telling men and I've learned most are okay with it. Okay. Here's the thing with that part to me. When people say I got uncomfortable telling men. Get comfortable just talking about your herpes. Don't do it for the men. You know, don't do it for the woman. Don't do it for them. Don't do it to see if people are going to be accepting of you. Do it because you've already accepted yourself. Make it just an easy thing in your life because it's something that comes for you, comes with you and it's never going to go away. So accept it and embrace it. It's never about the other person. Rejection is redirection, okay? And it doesn't, it's not being put on the table when it comes to your worth. And if somebody can walk away from you, the blessing, the prize, the trophy, because of herpes, something that you can't help, it to me, it just says they was just there for what you had in between your legs in the first place. So let them walk. How would you go about confronting the person it came from? I wouldn't. I'm the type of person that doesn't want to focus on the things that I can't help, the things that I can't handle. When I found out I had herpes, because of my lack of knowledge when it came to herpes, I thought that the person that I was with was the person who gave me herpes. But now with the knowledge that I know, I know that I I can't blame that person. All I have is to blame myself. When we get stuck in the, how did this happen to me? Who gave this to me? I trusted that person. When you get stuck in the things that you cannot control and you cannot change, you leave yourself stuck in the herpes stigma. Versus when you decide to say, all right, well, how do I live a happy, healthy life with this virus? That's when your narrative changes. That's when the shift comes. That's how you break yourself out of the stigma. But if you want to stay focused on stuff that you can't, you can't change, I don't, <laughs> you're going to leave yourself stuck in the stigma as well. I used to think my child's father gave me herpes. Truth of the matter is, I didn't know herpes wasn't included in your average STI panel. I didn't say, hey, doctor. Look, can you show me my results and explain this to me to even catch that my doctor wasn't testing me for herpes all along, which means I could have easily been the one that brought the herpes into the relationship. But I'm sitting here thinking because I was with this person when I found out that they had to be the one that gave it to me. Three, I had unprotected sex with my partner because I trusted them. I didn't have unprotected sex because I required to see their STI results because I took responsibility for my own entire sexual health and said, before you come here, before you enter, I need to see your results to even catch if that person had herpes or not. That's how I took my power back, by taking accountability. That's how I was able to move forward with my diagnosis. You see, if I would have kept blaming somebody, every time I had to talk about my herpes, I would have been thinking about that somebody getting mad all over again, leaving myself stuck in the stigma and not giving myself a fighting chance to grow, to elevate, to heal. 
Yes, it can lie dormant in for years before actual outbreak, and this is correct. And I think when I found out I had herpes, it's the same time I found out I was pregnant. So I'm thinking because I became pregnant is what triggered on an outbreak at the time. It was enough to trigger an outbreak because, again, my immune system is working on something else. You are so strong. Thank you, Alibaba. Mm. Can I get some likes? Can we tap the screen a little bit? Can we share this conversation? I appreciate y'all. We go on um, Clubhouse tonight at 7 p.m. for Healing Wednesdays. Um, if you wasn't there for it, I highly suggest that you show up. Thank you, Marion, for the love. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, y'all. Thank you. The love is appreciated, y'all. I always wonder about that. Does anyone have any more questions before I leave the lab today? I'm from Jamaica. I love you. I love you, too. I need to come to Jamaica and come see you. Got that in the on deck. I stay away from the sativa, but if you got that in the on deck or a little hybrid, when I come to Jamaica, me and you need a link. <laughs> what time is the live? It's at 7 p.m. tonight on Clubhouse, Eastern Standard Time. You can find my whole live schedule on my Instagram page, Shayna Singleton, or the Herpes Can Never Instagram page as well. All right, y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all for the love. Y'all have a good day. And hopefully I get to hear y'all tonight on Clubhouse. You get to hear me. If you decide to come to the stage, you can. But we will be on Clubhouse. You can find me on Clubhouse, Shana Singleton. You can find my partner on Clubhouse, Amber Spratt Jones. Or you can find our actually our actual house. It's titled Herpes Could Never. And we'll see you guys there. Thank you.